Hey everybody and welcome in. In the last video I showed you how to install Blender and in this video I'm going to show you a few settings and then my goal is to make you comfortable navigating around and selecting things in Blender. This might sound a little dull but I do consider this one of the most important videos if this is the first time that you're using Blender. So every time you open Blender, you are greeted with this window here. If it's the very first time you open Blender, it'll look a little bit different, but I just quickly want to run over it. It's a bit self-explanatory. You can open a few templates here, or you can open a specific file from your desktop right here, or you can open the last file that you worked on. Over here, you can choose a few different files that you previously worked on. And down here, you can read about the latest update for Blender, or if you want to support the development of Blender, you can do that down here. But in all these videos, we're going to be using the general. So we'll just click that and we are now ready to use Blender. So the first thing I want you to do is change a few settings. So we'll go up here to edit and preferences. And we agreed it with this window right here. If you're not already on the key map tab, click on that. And you can see we have a few settings here. It's very common in many other software that you use left click to select something. But in Blender, it's been right click for the past many, many, many years. I'm personally used to right click when I use Blender. You will have a easier time down the line working with right click over left click for select. I could go into a deep explanation about why, but I'm gonna leave a video in the description that go into a deep explanation of why you'd use right click over left click, if that's something you really want to know more about. Then over here for the spacebar action, I wanna change that to search. I use search all the time. And I'll be referring to the search menu a lot of times because I find it easy to use over clicking through menus. I'll obviously explain more about this when we start using the search feature. So click that and set spacebar to search. And last, I want to change select all toggle and I just want to check that. This will also make sense in a little bit, don't worry. All right, so I'll go down here and save my preferences. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is all these different windows that you see around here. And I just wanna give you a brief idea of what they are and how you'll be using them. The first window I wanna talk about here is our viewport. This is basically where you'll be navigating 3D and here you'll see everything that you're working on, basically your 3D canvas. You'll be spending a lot of time here for sure. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the outliner up here, this little window. You can see I have three things in here that correspond to what I have in my scene. And that's because all the things you have in your scene, you can find over here in the outliner. So this is sort of like an archive of everything that's currently in your project. You can select them both by clicking on them out here in the viewport, but you can also select them here if you were to want to. It's just a nifty little way of seeing what you have. And every time we create a new object, they will be archived over here as well. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the property window down here. And this is a very important window that you'll be using quite a lot as well. And I'll go into depth about each of these buttons when we start using them. For now, just know that this window here is where you change properties for your current tool, the environment or a given object. You can see the little gap here in between some of the buttons are the groupization of the kind of properties. The top one would be the current tool that you're using. So if I were to use a paintbrush, this is where I could change the color of the brush. The next group here is for everything related to the document and the environment. And the next group here is everything related to an object. And you can see here as I choose a different object, some of the buttons changes. You can see when I choose my light, I have a light bulb down here, so I can change some properties about my light. And with the camera, I get a camera, so I can choose some camera settings. And down here on the object, I have a bunch of different settings. But for now, just note that these buttons here are properties that you can change about the current selected object that you have. So next up, I just kind of quickly want to mention that we have a timeline down here at the bottom and we'll be using that for animation. Um, this is not something you should worry yourself about now, uh, but just note that down here you have the timeline. All right, so that's a little bit about all the windows that we are seeing currently here in Blender. And next up, I want to talk about selecting objects and, and that kind of stuff. So the first thing I want to talk about here is selecting things. And there's a few different ways you can go about it. The most common way is just by right clicking on something. And you can see here as I right click on an object, it highlights with this orange line. 
If you want to select multiple objects at once, you can hold down shift and right click to select objects or deselect objects. You can also use your left mouse button to drag over objects and select them like this as well. And if you want to deselect everything you have, you just press A. And if you have nothing selected and you press A, it'll select everything. So A stands for all. If you have something selected, it'll deselect. And if you have nothing selected, it'll select everything. Now, if you remember over here to our right, we have the outliner. You can also select objects by left clicking on them over here. And you can also use the A key over here to deselect everything or select everything. And you can also use the left mouse key to select multiple objects like that. So your selection options that works in the viewport for the most part also works over here in the outliner. That's a good little thing to keep in mind. But if you want to know more about selection, you can go over here and there's a tab called select. And you can see different ways that you can select or interact here. And you can also see the shortcut for something. For example, circle select here, it says the shortcut is C. So if we go out here and press C, you can see I can kind of paint select like this. So that was a little bit of the basics of how to select things. Now let's talk a little bit about how we navigate in 3D space. All right, let's talk a little bit about navigation in 3D space, a quite important topic. I shall be navigating quite a lot. The main way that you'll be navigating is by orbiting around objects and interacting with them. You orbit by holding down the middle mouse button. If I hold down shift and drag with my middle mouse button, you can see I'm kind of strafing left and right here. And this is here I want to mention that you might be thinking that you would be orbiting your selected object, but that's actually not the case. You are kind of orbiting a point in space. So you can see here I'm kind of orbiting what would be around here. There's no indication of what you are orbiting or where you are orbiting. And for a beginner, you can often find yourself lost and you know, kind of disappear from the 3D scene. That has happened to me before. If that's ever the case, I want to give a little bit of a tip here. You can either do it by selecting the main object in your scene here, the cube. And if you can't find the cube, like if I'm lost out here and I can't even find my object, you can go up here and select the object that you want to orbit. Hold your mouse out here in the viewport and press the dot key on NumBlock and it'll fly back and focus on the object that you had selected. Now, if you don't have a numpad, you can go up here to view and then you can see here we got frame selected and you can see the shortcut is numpad dot. And if you click on it, I'll focus like this. Um, so you can always go up here and find it if you would like to. And even better, if you don't want to access it through this menu here, you can always right click on it and add to quick favorite. Ooh, what is this new thing here? Well, quick favorite, you'll find that menu by pressing Q and everything you add to your quick favorite menu will be in here. So if you ever find a shortcut that I'll be talking about and you may be missing that key, I would highly suggest adding it to your quick favorite if it's something that you'll be using quite a lot. And lastly, I just want to mention that you zoom in and out by using the scroll wheel. There are obviously other ways that you can navigate 3D space as well. And you can go up here to the view menu if you want to toy around with different ways that you can navigate in 3D space. But uh, you should know the basics for now uh, and what you would need as a beginner. And then later down the line, when we progress through the videos, I'll talk about different ways that we'll be navigating. All right, so let's just quickly recap everything that we learned in this video. We went into preferences to change some settings, select to right click, spacebar for search, and select all toggle. We learned that the main big window here is our viewport where we see everything in our 3D scene. Over here to the right, we had the outliner, which is the archive for everything in our scene. Down here, we have the preferences where we could change settings for our current tool, everything that's for the scene or our current selected object. At the bottom here, we have the timeline, which we'll be using when we start animating. We talked about how we can select things in different ways. The main way is to right click on an object. We can also hold down the left mouse button and drag to select multiple objects. We can remove all our selection by pressing A. And if we have nothing selected and pressing A, we'll select everything. Then we talked a little bit about how you navigate in 3D space. The main way is to orbit with the middle mouse button. 
We can hold down shift and middle mouse to strafe left and right. Scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And if we ever find ourselves lost, we can focus on an object by pressing the numpad dot. It's very important for me to keep this course completely free. And if you felt like this course gave you some value and you want to show your support, I'll left a support link down in the description. And that's going to be it for this video, guys. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about the basics of editing and using the transform tool so we can start modifying our model and actually shape things out. To be continued.